to my channel. I'm Veronica with Nurturing Connections Homeschool, where I share resources, planners, and encouragement to help you connect with what matters most. Now, we have been homeschooling for over a decade, so I can't even believe I'm saying that, but we started way back when my now eighth grade son was in preschool and have since gotten out of those little preschool years now that my youngest is in second grade. So kindergarten, preschool, all of that, those little years, we are beyond that season, but I want to share with you, it is such a sweet, sweet time. So embrace that season if you're there. If you have little ones, enjoy that time. It is very, very fleeting. It goes by very, very quickly, but the impact that it has on their lives and on your life as well will be something that all of you will carry forever. Now, if you're just coming into homeschooling or you have your little one, you're wondering, where do I start? What do I do? That's what I'm gonna share with you today. I wanted to share with you a step-by-step -step guide to kind of help you through that process of setting your goals and understanding where you're headed. Charlotte Mason talked about children in the sense that they were whole persons. And I think that our society has lost that perspective in many ways. We want to get them in school as quickly as possible, get them reading as quickly as possible, and just focusing on all these things they can do. And we forget to cultivate the parts of their humanity that are of utmost importance. Charlotte Mason referred to it as building those relations that a child has with God, their creator, with others, with their family, making those connections, and then building those relations with the world around them as they better understand their world. And so I wanna encourage you wherever you are with your little ones to really embrace that understanding of who they are. They're learning so very much about faith and love and kindness and building relationships and building a love for learning at this phase as it is being modeled by you. So keep that in mind. If all you did in those little years was just love your children well, share your faith with them, pray with them, take them out into nature and explore God's creation with them and read a ton of books, you will have accomplished so very much and much more than any preschool or curriculum could cover. What you do when you share life with a child is that you bring them into your world and you show them what it means to have good manners, what it means to treat others with, with kindness and how to prepare meals and how to set a table and how to make a home and all of these things. And those things are infinitely more valuable, in my opinion, than having them sit for hours on end coloring worksheets and so forth. So. Get your kids out into the world, experience life with them, share life with them. So much of the Montessori method is about bringing home into a school environment. So for those of you that are looking into something like that, keep that in mind. You have all of those hands-on activities at your fingertips. Just utilize them, share your life with your child. Now, if you want a little bit more structure or if your child is already getting ready for kindergarten, you're like, what do I do now? Um, I created a preschool kindergarten bucket planning system. And so what I'm gonna do with you today is give you an overview of it all. I'm gonna share with you every page in that preschool kindergarten bucket planner so that you can see those steps that you can consider in creating your own plan for your homeschool. Now this particular planner is available for sale in my shop. It is very, very low price because my hope is just to get this in your hands as a tool that you can use so that you don't have to carry the weight of, am I doing enough? What, how many curriculums do I need to get? And all of that. I wanted to make this as easy for you as possible. I created this as a means to do that. It basically takes you through the seven key areas that you'll want to consider when you're preparing your preschool or kindergarten plans for the upcoming year. Now this is something I have personally used with my children. It goes through discipleship, it goes through social studies and science, and it lists key indicators here that will help you keep track along the way. So that as you're doing this with your children, you can monitor their progress, you can make notes of all the resources you see out there that you wanna share with them, books that you wanna find, book lists, all of that goes in here in the planner 
to make it as easy as possible for you to integrate in your daily lives. Now, if this child is your oldest, then this particular planner will really just give you that inspiration you need and guide you through that process so that you can create some meaningful learning opportunities with your child throughout the day. Formal learning at this age will only take between 15 to 30 minutes for preschoolers and maybe 30 minutes to an hour for kindergartners. And so that is your sit down time, most likely for those academic subjects in the kindergarten years and beyond. Now, all the rest of the stuff is the stuff that you'll just want to be intentional about as you're going through your day to day life, as you're choosing books to read with them, as you're creating opportunities and field trips and outings with your child to further develop them and create that love for learning and for the world around them. If this child is your youngest, then you may have started homeschooling midway with some of your olders or something like that. What I want to encourage you to do is still look through this video series, look through this document and see how you can be intentional with that child. Play is such an important part of childhood, but a lot of times we leave our little ones out to just kind of fend for themselves as we try to focus on the learning of the older kids. I want to remind you that their learning is just as valuable and just as important as the older kids learning. And so making a few minutes of, or setting aside a few minutes of time each and every day to cultivate that with them, to guide them, to nurture those connections will just be so important in helping them grow in those areas and also build their connection with you. Now, I do have a blog post if you have olders that you're homeschooling and you have toddlers or little ones in the mix that gives you some tips to consider. Um, one of them is starting off with your youngest child. A lot of times that is all they need to just really feel close to you and bonded to you. And right after they have that time with you, they're ready to go and explore on their own. This will give you some ideas to get them started with like sensory bins, um, activities that they can do. And I also have a whole video series that you can look into that gives you some of those resources where they can discover mathematical concepts through activities, through hands-on games. Um, same thing for reading and Bible, some books that you can consider, sensory bin ideas. All of that is on my website that I will link below because my hope and prayer is that you have the resources you need in order to make this process and this journey as easy as possible so that you can be more intentional with your children to cultivate those connections, to focus on what matters most. So that is my heart behind all of this. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera at this time and I'm gonna take you step by step through these indicators. I'm gonna give you ideas, I'm gonna share resources, the whole bit, so bear with me. Today we're gonna to be looking at discipleship and beginning academics and we're also gonna be targeting social studies and creative expression. And then after this, in the second video, we will be looking at science, health and physical education, we'll be looking at life skills, we'll look at some extra buckets, planning sheets, kindergarten add-ons, memory pages, the whole bit. So keep an eye out for that second video. It's coming soon and hopefully it'll give you a good idea and a good starting point for homeschooling your preschooler and or kindergartner. Now let me flip the camera and let's get started. When you go to print out your preschool bucket planner, it really helps to print the cover on cardstock. After that, you'll find the copyright page, along with seven specific buckets that I've included here. Now, I truly believe that these seven areas are important in developing a child as a whole person. But as you go through them, if you see something that you don't think is of utmost importance or you feel it's something that you don't want to necessarily include in your planner, then by all means, take it out. Don't print it out. And on the other hand, if there are things that you do want to include that are important to you and your family, then you'll find a blank sheet that you can customize to meet your specific needs. So for example, if you have a child with special needs and they're receiving specific therapy sessions, then you may choose to include the specific activities here that you need to do at home with them so that you can be intentional about making that a part of your daily routines. 
Now underneath each bucket title, you'll have a key objective. So for discipleship, I had to ask myself, what exactly do I want our children to know about God? And ultimately it was that they love God and also love others. And so after writing this objective down, the next step was what would that look like? And here I included some key indicators for loving God and knowing his heart, and then for loving others. Some of the indicators here, are, I know Jesus loves me. I thought that was so important. I feel like this is something that can easily be missed in the day-to-day -day grind. And so just being intentional about talking to our children about who Jesus is and how much he loves them. Listening to Bible stories. Do we have Bible story books that we can share with our children? And if not, then that's what the resources section is for. As you find resources that help you accomplish your goals here, you can plug them into this, these boxes here and keep them in your bucket so that when it's time to plan your lessons, and we'll go over our planning sheets over here, then you can draw from those buckets and use the resources that are most helpful to you. And so um, I do wanna point out that on my site, I already have some specific Bible resources that I've shared, uh, math resources, and so I encourage you to go check it out, watch the videos, and if there's anything in there that you find helpful, plug them into your planners as well. I pray each day, I know about creation, I memorize Bible scriptures, I sing songs of praise to God, and again, that could be things like CDs, finding some different songs that you want to share with your child. They may be songs from church or hymns, um, but again, plugging in the ones that work for you. Now, I'm learning about Christian virtues. Now, I shared this in my video on preschool Bible resources, but this was one of our favorites for first virtues. And um, you'll see here it goes over things like kindness and truthfulness and love, patience, forgiveness, and so forth. And so as an example, if this is something that you wanna check out, then you can plug it in here to look up later. I use good manners to be a blessing. I'm kind to others. I apologize and practice forgiveness. I listen quietly when others speak. I'm learning how to share and take turns and I'm learning how to obey. Now, I do wanna say that while books and videos and CDs could be really helpful for this, a lot of these do not require any of that. A lot of this is just about being intentional with our children and taking the time to teach them what it looks like to share, talk to them about what it means to forgive, and then modeling, apologizing when we ourselves fall short and say things that we shouldn't say. So much of discipleship is us following Christ, and in turn, as they follow us, we point them to him. So these are just some ideas that I hope will inspire you in your own walk and in your own discipleship with your children. But of course, feel free to make it work for you. The next section that I included here was beginning academics. Now you'll see here this includes reading, writing, and math. These are the key things that I believe will lay a strong foundation for future learning in academics. In reading, for example, it is so important that we read to our children. And so giving them those opportunities every single day to listen to books and stories and poems read aloud. And then encouraging them to share what they've learned or heard in those stories and poems and books. So I can narrate a story that has been read to me. With little children, we want to guide them along in those narrations. So as an example, after we've finished a little story, and we can ask them, who was the main character in this story? Where did the story take place? What happened in this story? What was the problem? And how did the character solve the problem? And by giving our children those cues, we start teaching them the skill of narration, which will take them so very far in the later years when they're writing written narrations and learning information on their own. So practicing that in a gentle and easy manner can really help build that skill set. And then I know the alphabet song. 
Now we don't need a CD or a fancy DVD for this. Just singing the song with our children will help them learn it easily and quickly. This is something we can do as we're swinging them on the swings or as we're driving in the car. Songs are just such a powerful tool for memorizing information. And so giving them the opportunity to sing that song and learn it will help them when it's time to actually learn the letters and the sounds that those letters make in beginning reading. Then beginning writing. What do our children need to do to prepare? Speaking is what's of most importance when it comes to writing. And so speaking to our children in complete sentences so that they in turn can learn to speak clearly in complete sentences. Drawing counterclockwise circles. And so just practicing this a few minutes each day, just drawing circles going this way. We wanna make sure that it's counterclockwise, not the other way. This prepares them for learning the letter C, and A, and D, I'm left-handed, so this is a little awkward here, and G, and Q, and so forth. And so practicing counterclockwise circles, tracing letters on paper. This can be so, so simple. All you do is just write down some words like this, or the alphabet on paper, put it into a laminating sheet or laminate it itself, and then just have your child trace. Something simple and easy for them to do each day and it just helps them start noticing those letters and start developing those fine motor skills. Now for our littlest ones, we can do this on the chalkboard, we can do this with chalk on the sidewalk, we can do this um, in the air. So it doesn't have to be on paper until they're ready for that but just building it up to get to them to that place, that will be good. And then tracing shapes and lines on paper as well. And then beginning math. I listen to number books, and so finding books such as the best counting book ever to read to our child and start familiarizing them with numbers will be helpful. I know how to sort objects by size, you know, small, medium, and large. A good source for that would be something like the three bears where they're able to see the differences in sizes there. I understand how patterns work and so we can create patterns with just different colors or different shapes. You know, red, blue, red, blue, or red, red, blue, blue, and ask them to continue the pattern as they go. Now the brain is a pattern making device and the sooner they can start recognizing patterns intentionally, the easier learning will be for them in the future in all areas. I can count objects to 10 and to 20. So again, this is real world stuff. We don't have to buy a workbook to teach them how to count. We can just count the steps every time we take those steps up going upstairs. We can count the crayons that we hand them or the snacks or the raisins that we give them or the amount of times that they swing on the swing. And just counting out loud in our everyday experiences will help bring math to life for them so that when you do sit down to do more advanced learning, then they'll be ready for it and have a strong foundation. Next, we have social studies. And the key objective here is I learn about my family and world. For children, their world is small. And so we start where they are and then begin to expand it as they are ready to learn about the great big world out there. So we start with their name and their birthday. We start with teaching them their address and where they live. I know my parents' phone numbers. This is so very important for little children to know how to contact their parents if need be. We chose to use songs for this. So much like the alphabet song, when you teach them a song, they're better able to retain that information. So for us, this is a tune that we used. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's my mom's phone number. That's my mom's phone number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So very simple tune 
plug in your phone number if that one works for you. We did include a second tune for my husband's number so that our children could easily memorize those and then we could track their progress here. I know about my family, about parents and siblings and grandparents and aunts and uncles. I know about different occupations like homemakers or farmers or librarians and policemen. I know the continents and oceans and I can describe the boundaries of our home. So simple indicators here that just start opening their eyes to the world around them. And again, feel free to add on anything here that works for you. Creative expression. I play and create. So in here, these are just some ideas for developing creativity in your child. From coloring and painting, painting with different art media, to identifying the colors by name, tracing stencils, listening to beautiful music, doing finger plays with our children, such as the incy wincy spider went up the water spout. Children love those and they love the repetition of it all. So if we do it every single day, five times a day, they will just enjoy every minute of it. I use toy instruments to create music. I engage in imaginative play. If you give your child a box and some fabric and yarn, they will create. I play games and puzzles. I create handicrafts. Charlotte Mason um, was a huge advocate for handicrafts and these were just crafts that went beyond paper and glue and scissors to things that were actually meaningful that you could give as gifts or enjoy in your home as decor. And so looking for some meaningful things that kids can create that could really bless the home or bless others. I build things with blocks and other tools. I know how to use lacing cards or I engage in sensory play. Sensory bins are so much fun and kids really enjoy the time um, spent playing and manipulating with different objects. So I have a blog post and video on my site where you can get different ideas for sensory bins that I really think will engage your child and to help develop that sensory sense further. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up on your way out if you like these types of videos. It really helps get the word out to others who may just be starting out and could use this information. And I really appreciate the support. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time for video two.